Or should I put it down? I'll hold it. Okay, great. Um, so yes, I just thank you very much for inviting me to kickstart the research session, which is going to be exciting and interesting, not stressful and technical. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm going to give a very brief overview on two research coordination tools that the GTFCC partnership has developed. I might be from the Wellcome Trust, which are a, a GTFCC partner with a big focus and remit on research, but these were developed for and by the partnership. Apologies to those of you who have already seen elements of this before, but I think it's really useful to put the lightning talks on actual research projects that we're going to see after this in the broader context. So, why do we need research when we already have the tools and strategies to control and prevent cholera? Well, the answer essentially is simple, is that research is used to generate the data and evidence that we need to use the tools and strategies that we have to control cholera more effectively, more efficiently, and more sustainably. Investing in research, supporting research, will enable us to progress cholera control faster and better and at lower cost. So, with this in mind, back in 2020, we asked ourselves, what research is most needed to help countries meet the goals of the Ending Cholera Roadmap? Through a very extensive and consultative process, we then from this developed the cholera research agenda, which is aligned to the roadmap and outlines a list of research priorities. Oh, it's actually slightly bigger than I was fearing. Okay, so I'm obviously not going to read all of these out. It's illustrative of what you can find in the research agenda available on the GTFCC website. You can find in it a, to a top 20 list of research priorities, and you can also find research priorities organized by pillar. The majority of the research questions outlined in the research agenda focus very much on implementation and operational research. So the sort of questions around how, where, and when to use the existing tools most effectively, and some formative research about how to increase acceptance and uptake of the tools we have. You're gonna hear some really great lightning talks from each of these areas and one on multi-sectoral research from Flavio. In addition to these research priorities, um, there were three focus areas of discovery research that were really pulled out in the research agenda. So these have a much longer time to impact, naturally, because they're discovery, and they're around the development of new tools and databases, but they're ultimately critical towards moving towards eliminating cholera. So under that, you have the development of novel and innovative diagnostics that are cheaper, faster and more accurate, and we're gonna hear a little bit more about the challenges of developing these in one of the lightning talks. You also need to have new and improved cholera vaccines that protect everyone for longer. And then finally, one of the research areas was about the coordination of Vibrio cholera genomics. So we have a much better understanding of the long range transmission between countries and continents, and then we can use this to adapt decision making accordingly. So the question is, how do we then monitor progress on this. We always talk about monitoring progress. How do we monitor progress on research? Well, there are funding databases available where you can get a snapshot, essentially, of how much money is being put into a specific disease area. I pulled this together very quickly, and it will not be fully comprehensive because it depends, like everything, about what data has been uploaded to a database. But essentially, you can see where the research money is going, how many grants are active, and how much money is being put into this area. And you can see that there are several funders which are very committed to investing in cholera funding and research. The challenge with this sort of database is that it's very difficult to see where the actual data and evidence is being generated, which is not always the same as where the money is going. It's also difficult to see what are the individual objectives under each research study title, which can be very broad sometimes. Um, and fundamentally, it can also be very difficult to pull out, well, what's going to be the impact on public health decision making of this research? which is why we have developed the Cholera Research Tracker, again, available publicly and freely available on the GTFCC website. The aim of this is that you will be able to essentially see ongoing and recently completed in about the last five to six years research projects that are focused really much on cholera control um, efforts. You can scroll in, as I have done here in Africa, which gives you a much more finer view of it, and then click on individual research projects to find out much more about them. And helpfully, you can search by, um, by keyword, really anything you want to find out, you can type in the search bar. As you can see, there are 62 projects on this database, and if I had gone back a slide and you'd seen how many grants are being awarded, you can see that not everything is on here, and that is a key gap at the moment and is preventing us from being able to use this tool most effectively. So if I can finish, and what are we going to do with these tools? Well, I think that they are a really useful advocacy tool. You know, I think they show how much momentum and value is placed on data and evidence by the GTFCC partnership. They also show individual projects in a much larger context. You know, 
the whole is much greater than the sum of the parts and each individual project has a role to play in advancing progress against the roadmap. Donors and researchers can use the agenda to help prioritise research that will answer very specific nuanced questions around the policy and practice and programmatic and policy stakeholders can also use these tools to help them incorporate research into their operational plans so that data and evidence is generated during implementation. I shall end to a final call to action. If you are involved with research, please put it on the research tracker. Partly this will help us understand which research questions are being addressed and more importantly, which ones are not. It will also help us when we come to trying to pull together evidence briefs, being able to identify you know, some up and coming research in new areas. And finally, it's also very helpful for picking talks to showcase at events such as this. So if you would like people to know about your research, make it publicly available. Thank you very much.